Hey everyone, Forrest here with Fofo Astro, and today I realized that I've never made a video on how I networked everything. Um, built this new observatory, and I kind of documented the whole process, um, but networking is one thing that I'm fairly passionate about, and I actually have never done a video documenting how that process worked. So that's what I want to talk about today. So there were a few challenges with networking an observatory like this, and the first one was the distance between the house and the observatory building. Um, it was about a 500 foot run as far as total cable distance. It's not quite that far as the crow flies, um, but I had to do a 90 and a couple other things just to kind of not dig up the yard as much. So it was about 500 feet of cable to get from this building to my um, main network switch in my house. And that provides some interesting challenges because copper cable, uh, Cat5, Cat6, Cat6A, whatever you're talking about, um, the signal degrades, it breaks down, it's not as good over longer distances and your speeds reduce. And there's a lot more kind of caveats to it than that, but basically you run into issues running copper cable that far. And there are some cables that can do it, they can pass that normal distance, uh, but I felt much more confident running fiber optics. Um, and fiber optics have no real distance limitations at least not in the distances that we're going to run into them as just homeowners or uh, you know DIY astrophotography enthusiasts. So I knew fiber was the answer. And the other thing is fiber lines are, don't have any electrical interference. So you can run them in the same conduit um, with electrical wiring, which also was a big deal because that means I didn't have to run two conduits from my observatory to my house. I only needed to run one. So for me, that was the best choice. Now, obviously, if your observatory is closer to your house, it might be more price advantageous to run copper. Um, honestly, though, as far as the cabling is concerned, fiber optic cables are actually cheap cheaper than copper in a lot of situations. Uh, what gets more expensive is the infrastructure on either side of it to make everything work. So basically what I did was I ran a standard multi-mode fiber cable. I'll link one of those down in the description on Amazon um, under the ground with my uh, electric conduit. And that fiber cable on one end out here plugs into a network switch that all of my observatory devices are connected to. And then on the other end, it plugs into my main home switch, which is again, what all my home network devices are plugged into. And you can get these switches from a lot of different companies. I like Ubiquity um, or the Unify system from Ubiquity. That's what my whole house runs on. Um, and Ubiquity sells some really nice fiber capable switches. Now, the other nice thing about fiber is it can actually go to a fast faster connectivity speed. So um, you can actually run fiber at 10 gigabit or 20 gigabit or 40 gigabit speeds, which for the observatory is not a huge deal, but in the future that would make my download times faster. So you're kind of future proofing yourself by running that style of cable as well. So let's go ahead and take a look. Let's look at the observatory side and then we'll pop into the house and take a look at the house side. All right, and right here is where we see that two inch conduit come up into the observatory. It then runs up into a little 6x6 six six junction box, which then runs up into my electrical distribution panel. And all this was put in by my electrician. Now, this 6x6 six six box here, the reason this exists is purely just to be able to have a place for that uh, fiber cable to pop out before we get into the main electrical box. I didn't want to be dealing with popping the fiber out of the main electrical panel. Um, so instead, that's what this box is for. And then that little fiber line, let me go ahead and zoom in here for you guys, is right there. So that black double part cable, and again, I've linked one of these in the description, runs all the way to my house um, through the ground, through a conduit. And we can see it's plugged into what's called an SFP port. Um, I don't know what SFP stands for, but that's the fiber port that's the most commonly found on, on fiber optic capable switches. Um, and you can notice that that little fiber cable goes into this silver adapter here. That's an SFP fiber to SFP adapter and then into my switch. So that makes this entire ubiquity switch part of my home network, really, really simple. And then I have three distributions to the different things in the observatory. So um, this port number one, this goes to this Wi-Fi access point. This just gives me Wi-Fi out here at the observatory and most of my field, which is nice. This second port here actually goes down under the building and up over on the pier. And it's to plug in my ethernet power controller, which allows me to power cycle different devices uh, through the web interface. So if I have something that I need to power cycle, I can do that remotely. 
Port number three also goes down underneath the observatory and up on the pier, and that is to plug in my Gemini mount. So I'll show you that here in a second. And then lastly, port number eight, and I didn't pick eight for any reason other than just it was on the end closest, that actually plugs in my observatory computer. So this is an Intel NUC, um, which is just a little observatory computer, and this does all the running of the observatory. And I'll make a video on the software side of things. This video is definitely going to focus much more on the hardware, how everything's connected and works. I'll make a specific software video as well. Um, if that interests you, drop a comment down below. I'd love to know if you guys want to learn more on the software specifically. One other network related thing is just a little Wi-Fi security camera. Again, this is from Ubiquiti. Um, this is their little, I believe it's the Gen 3 Wi-Fi camera. And this is super cool. It gives me little notifications if it ever detects motion in the observatory. And that is only connectable because of this Wi-Fi access point here. So that was an integral part of the whole system because this observatory is so far away from my house, the home Wi-Fi does not get close to covering it. And again, just because we're covering all the hardware, here's the Gemini system uh, from Lost Mandy, the Lost Mandy Gemini 2. And there's that Ethernet plug there. So that's one of those two Ethernet ports that goes to the pier. And then the other one, like I said, and I've made a video specifically on this, but plugs into my Ethernet uh, power controller, my power relay, which is this box right here. And this lets me independently control all of the circuits in my observatory. So if I need to power cycle something, I have the ability to do that. Okay, so now that we've seen the observatory side of things, let's talk a little bit about what needs to happen in your house in order to network something like that. Let's start with the basics. All of us have, or most of us have, a Wi-Fi router somewhere in our house providing wireless internet to the home. In the back of your Wi-Fi router, there's generally going to be four Ethernet ports to plug wired network devices into. All you really need in your house is an SFP capable network switch, okay? So that's just a network switch that you can plug a fiber line into. And what we're going to do with that network switch is connect it to our Wi-Fi router that's just sitting on our house. So you take an Ethernet cable, connect it from your router to that switch, just using a standard Ethernet cable, and then that SFP or SFP Plus, that fiber cable coming from your observatory, you plug that into the SFP port on that switch, and all of a sudden your observatory is bonded to your router through that switch that's in your home. Networking is really cool in the way that most of this stuff is so simple that you just plug it in and it just starts working. Now, obviously, there's tons of additional things that you can do, but as far as the hardware is concerned, it's pretty much plug and play for most modern switches. And again, I've left links in the description down below for all of my recommended bits. Now, I did mention earlier going to a 10 gigabit system or a faster speed system, and I want to kind of touch back on that. Your network will only be as fast as the slowest piece of equipment in the system. So if you run 10 gigabit fiber line and you run 10 gigabit capable wiring and all this stuff, but you're connecting all of it to a standard gigabit switch, you're going to be limited by the speed of that gigabit switch. So my recommendation is I think 10 gigabits cool, it's awesome, it's flashy, but I wouldn't necessarily buy switches that are capable of that yet because that really increases the price quite a bit. My recommendation would be to always run 10 gigabit or whatever the next step in speed is capable cabling so that in the future you don't have to rerun those cables, specifically if you're running them in the walls of your house or you're running them out to an observatory through 500 feet of conduit. You don't want to get to a point where you have to worry about that in the future. So I would always say run fast enough or extra fast cabling and then as your hardware needs grow, you can increase that. Now with that said, I want to go take a look at my house's networking infrastructure. Now I have gone above and beyond because again, I'm a little bit of a nerd when it comes to networking, but I want to hammer home, it is as simple to get in to fiber and run long distance cabling as just getting two fiber capable switches, one for the observatory, one for your house, and then in the house connecting that fiber capable switch to your wireless router to bond those together. So here's a little window into my network infrastructure. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here, but basically think of this device right here as my Wi-Fi router. Um, it's actually not, it's my modem, but eh, think about it as my Wi-Fi router. And coming into this is the plug from my internet service provider. So this ethernet cable comes from my ISP. It gives my whole house internet. If I unplug that right now, I would lose access to the internet. Well, this device 
plugs in via, hey look, an SFP plus cable to this. Think of this as the back of my router where you can plug in hardwired connections. And then this connects to all the different bits of infrastructure that I have in my house. But the one that I wanna draw your attention to is this blue cable right here. This actually, through a couple other connections, is the cable that runs out to the observatory itself. And we can see those little blinking lights down there mean that it is actively communicating with the observatory, with the switch that's out there. So essentially, if we think of these two boxes as together, my wireless router that I would have in my home, all we're doing is we're connecting our wireless router to the observatory through a plug right here. So there's a lot you can do, obviously I have uh, a lot of different wireless access points and wired connections in my home. But again, it really is as simple as getting something that has an SFP plus connector, connecting your observatory to that via fiber, and then connecting that SFP plus capable switch to your Wi-Fi router to make everything work. And you all, that's the network hardware that I use to make my observatory function. If you like this video, drop a like down below. I would really appreciate it. If you want to follow along with more videos having to do with observatories and astronomy and astrophotography, definitely hit the subscribe button. And if learning more about the software side of this network setup interests you, definitely let me know down below in the comments. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll catch you in the next one.